Hi everyone, Ross Porter here and ready to talk to another baseball icon. And this fellow certainly changed the game. He's credited with reviving the stolen base, which was a basic strategy in baseball. And I'm talking about a distinct pleasure of mine to welcome my friend, Maury Wills, who's 88 years old, 88 years young, and joins us from his home in Sedona, Arizona. Maury, great to see you. Good to see you, Ross. You can leave the age out. <laughs> you look like you could go out and steal second base right now. <laughs> uh, I probably could if you were pitching. <laughs> Maury, let's review your 14 seasons in the major leagues. You were the shortstop on three Dodger World Championship teams in 1959, 1963, and 1965. In 1962, you were the National League Most Valuable Player after setting a major league record with 104 stolen bases while only being caught 13 times that year. Willie Mays slugged 49 home runs that year and drove in 141 runs, and you beat him by seven points to win the MVP award. You were the All-Star Game MVP that year in 1962, and it's what's still a major league record. You played in 165 games, including three in the playoffs that season. Maury played in seven All-Star games, folks. He won two gold gloves. He led the National League in stolen bases for six consecutive years from 1960 to 1965. He had 586 stolen bases in his great career and 490 of them came as a Dodger, which is still a franchise record. Very impressive. Maurice, morning wills. Maury, what, what were you happiest about after all those credentials? Uh, hearing you go over them again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross, you haven't changed a bit, and that's good. You don't need to. Um, thanks thanks for, for reminding me of all the things that I did when I was a younger man. <laughs> Would you say break? Would you say breaking Ty Cobb's record was maybe your highlight in your mind? Uh, probably so. Ty Cobb, we'll never forget him. He'll never forget us. <laughs> That's right. And you beat him by eight stolen bases too at that, that time. Maury, you were um, the seventh of thirteen children in your family, born and raised in Washington D.C. When you were in high school, you were known as Sonny Wills, not Maury Wills. Where did Sonny come from? I, I have no idea where Sonny came from. You it came from you, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> um, but those were the days. You were um, a, you were a tremendous athlete in high school, all city quarterback in football, all city in basketball, all city in baseball. One year, uh, your football team not only went undefeated, you didn't allow any points to be scored by the opposition that year. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing too, Ross. That was great. <laughs> but, but, baseball, but, but, but that opposition is not laughing, so let's go easy. <laughs> in baseball, at that time, you were a pitcher. And in one game, you pitched a one-hitter, and you struck out 17 batters. Now, how long... Did you remain a pitcher before you became a shortstop? I'm wondering where you got all this information. <laughs> Gee whiz. Um, I, I have no idea. It's been too long ago. Yeah. But I know I enjoyed my high school career. Yeah. Maury, you had eight and a half years in the minor leagues because the Dodgers had a a future Hall of Fame shortstop named Pee Wee Reese, who was uh, the captain in Brooklyn. But before the 1959 season, the Detroit Tigers bought your contract from the Dodgers for $35,000. You were in spring training, but when it was all over, they sent you back to the Dodgers. You had to be frustrated. It was great when, they, when I got the word that they were calling me up. Did you contribute right away, or did it take you a while to get in the, the right groove? Uh, about Pee Wee? About no, about when you got to L.A., were you 
were you uh, playing the way you wanted to play? Oh, no, I, I see what you mean. No way. I, 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 I was fumbling, missing. Uh, uh, I was missing up. They were going to send me back, and I, I think I cried. I don't want to go back to the minor leagues. Uh, finally, I connected, and everything was downhill from there. Yeah. Well, base stealing was really a lost art when you came along. You changed the face of the game, Maury. Tommy John, who pitched in the major leagues for 26 years, said almost single-handedly, Maury turned baseball from its love affair with plotting one-dimensional sluggers and got the game to consider pure speed and serious offensive and defensive weapons. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're flattering me now, Ross. <laughs> like Tommy John. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll always remember him. Uh, that was nice of Tommy to say that. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't say it myself. It wouldn't go over well. <laughs> let, it, let, let me tell everybody exactly how you changed the game. To show the difference that you made, the two years before you began your streak of leading the National League in stolen bases, Willie Mays was the top base stealer with 31 and 27. Before that, the leader had between 16 and 38 stolen bases in 29 of 30 years. Now, Mays had 40 the other season. But beginning in 1960, Maury led the league in steals for six consecutive years with totals of 50, 35, 104, 40, 53, and 94, respectively. In 1962, as we say, he broke Cobb's record when he swiped 104 bases. Cobb had uh, stolen 96 in 1915. So that particular 62 season, Maury stole more bases than every team in baseball. I think Washington stole 99. Maury, why did you go from uh, 35 to 104 to 40? I don't know. Uh, uh, Ross, I, I just got on a, on a, on a, on a tear and it, 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 you know, it just happened. It wasn't yeah. something I had planned. Uh, I wish I was that good that I could plan that and, and, <laughs> and succeed, but it wasn't that way at all. Yeah. Um, but I'm still feeling the results of of uh, of that year. Well, you know, your right leg was always uh, bruised. Uh, I think the leg even started uh, bleeding internally in 1965 when you were really on pace to surpass 104, didn't you? Yeah, that's right, Ross. I think right now it's I'm bleeding on the pace that uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm lucky if I get through tomorrow. <laughs> well, you're looking uh, pretty good. I'm, I'm kind of joking, but uh, it, it was a great year and I, I loved, I wasn't very popular, uh, but I loved stealing those bases. Oh yeah. Uh, was it easier for you to steal a base against a left-handed pitcher or a right-hander? You, 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 you got some great questions here, Ross. Uh, thank you. you. You would think that you were a base stealer. No, no, no. Uh, of course, it was, it was easier to steal off of a, a right-handed pitcher than it was a left-handed pitcher. Left-handed is looking at, right at me directly. And, and I had to steal the base. Uh, the right-hander had to look over his shoulder. I would say the left shoulder and try to keep me close. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 was, it, was a, it was a great year for me. Maury, what catcher did you respect the most? And, and did catchers 
ever figure in whether you were going to try to steal a base or not? Ah, uh, good question. I respected all the catchers. I knew that I had to stay on top of my game in order to steal those bases. It, it never got to a point where it was easy and I could light it up and, yeah. and, and, and not respect the throwing ability of those catchers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, uh, it was a great year. Uh, every time I got on first, my teammates knew it was a double. <laughs> uh, I think the opposition probably knew that too. They would never admit it. Yeah, uh, you're not supposed to admit defeat yeah. in any way in baseball. Uh -huh. Maury Wills is our guest. Uh, he played for the Dodgers from 1959 to 1966, the Pirates in 1967 and 1968, the Expos in 1969 until they traded him. Uh, back to the Dodgers, where he played through 1972. Maury, many people, and I'm one of them, believe that you should be in the Hall of Fame because you revolutionized baseball with your base stealing. Now, you appeared for the first time as a candidate on the Hall of Fame's golden era election ballot for positive uh, Hall of Fame consideration in 2015. Uh, there are 16 members on the committee. You need 12 votes or 75% to be inducted. You received nine votes, only three shy. That committee votes on 10 selected candidates every three years. Tell us where you stand right now. When does your name come up again? Uh, Ross, it, it, it doesn't matter. In a way it does matter, in a way it doesn't matter. Um, some of this, a lot of the, not some of, but a lot of the, the players that do the voting were pitchers that I stole off of. Yeah. And pitchers would always look at me and say, oh, you little so-and-so, I <laughs> will get you yet. <laughs> and, and I was a little smart ass. I would say, yeah, 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 yeah. Back yeah. at the pitcher. And, and they remember that. So... Now it's time to do the voting and, and the pitches pitches run. Are you are you coming up in the next year or so? Gee, I don't know. I try not to follow it. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to take it one day at a time and and do the best that I can. Folks, Maury wrote a book. And he wrote this book 45 years ago. <laughs> And I took some things out of the book just to make sure that uh, I was correct in my asking him the questions. Maury, you said you don't have to have blinding speed. Speed is simply overrated. <laughs> well, it's not quite overrated. And you, you don't really need to be uh, a, a, a wizard uh, to steal bases. You just, you just need to. Uh, you, you need some speed, but mainly you need to be able to get a good jump off the off the pitcher. Yeah. And I I had all the pitchers uh, zeroed in. I I could I could I knew how they liked their coffee. <laughs> the the yeah. pitcher. Yeah. I knew them so well. <laughs> and you also said that fear of failure has to be eliminated. A good base sealer really has to force himself to be aggressive. And slowing down before a slide is fatal. <laughs> you sound like a base stealer. <laughs> <laughs> Gee whiz, Ross. That's, that's true. Both of those things are true. You, you don't have to have blinding speed, but you do have to uh, be able to run a little bit. Uh, about Ross Porter's speed will be good enough. <laughs> you got to be faster than that. But you, uh, you were able to accelerate very, very quickly off of a base. That was one of your strengths. That's true. But you can't outrun the ball either. You <laughs> have to be able to get a good jump. 
Yeah. Uh, and then you would be able to have to be able to run uh, uh, adequately. You have said that a fastball is usually not a stealing pitch. So you had to guess, I guess, when the pitcher was going to throw a fastball, right? Uh, I tried to eliminate the, the guessing out there. Then I'm setting myself up to, to, to be just 50% if I guess. I, I, I read the picture. I, I couldn't read whether he was going to throw a curve or throw a fastball. But um, I kept him. I kept him guessing when I was going to go. Yeah. Um, so that put him at a disadvantage. What but, was a good stealing count? What count did you like to have when you were going to go? Well, I, I liked for the, the pitcher to be behind in the in the count. Mm -hmm. That way I know he had to give a lot of attention, a lot of concentration on the next pitch. Uh, you must have seen a lot of pitch outs. Um, was that another situation where you just had to <laughs> play it by ear? <laughs> That's true. I, I, I had to figure it. Well, here's a good time to pitch out. Uh, so to still when 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 I'm ahead in the count, it's to my advantage because it's not a good time to be pitching out when 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 I'm on first base. So you'd like two and one or three and one with those good counts to go on? Oh, three and one and two and one. Oh, those are great count, Ross. <laughs> you sound like a pitcher. <laughs> Maury, let me ask you a question. Do you think that stealing bases is not popular with today's managers? Well, probably not. Uh, if, 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 if I might say this without being sounding too arrogant, uh, if Maury Wills is on first base, I, I think that it's okay for the manager to have stealing a base in mind. If, if there's somebody else who, who's not as quick, um, not you, Ross. <laughs> yeah, <I'll see. laughs> I, I think that is probably okay. Yeah. Maury, you have made the statement that you were not merely an athlete, but an entertainer. You wanted to entertain the fans. I, I hear you, yeah. Uh, just answering that last question was entertaining. Uh, uh, fans said, well, he's going to go now. And, and some other fans said, I don't think so. And another fan might say, yes, he will. And so, so they were having a good time too, the, yeah. the fans. Uh, they were even betting. Um, some of them would, would, would go home. You know, go, would, Maury, go. Go, Maury, go. Yeah, you, 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 you know, Ross. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to sound real arrogant about it. I, I never did come off. One, I never wanted to come off arrogant. I always wanted to, to, to seem, seem, and that's a big word in this statement. <laughs> I wanted to seem uh, like I was uh, uh, um, lucky. Uh -huh. the word. But I had, I had those pictures he wrote in. I knew which picture was quick to first base. I knew which picture was uh, uh, quick to home, another was slow at home. I know another one, uh, another picture might be, um, well, whatever. Um, I had them zeroed in pretty much. 
You know, you became a switch hitter thanks to Bobby Bregan when you were at Spokane. Was that difficult for you? No, it was not because I was in favor of that. Russ, you know, you asked me you're asking some, some good questions here. You've done your homework. Uh -huh, uh, you. Without Bobby Bregan switching me around and making me a switch hitter uh, instead of uh, just strictly right, and uh, I probably wouldn't be doing this interview right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Bregan was is, is very prominent in my thinking and in my being. Uh, so wherever Bobby is, I am wishing well. Maury, when I was a youngster, um, our family came to California and we went to see a game, I think, at Gilmore Field. And Bobby Bregan was the manager and he had all of his players wearing shorts <laughs> during the game. <laughs> I never forgot that. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I'm not going to laugh at Bobby, though. <laughs> you can. But if I were to do that, the next time we sh I see Bobby Bregan on the baseball diamond, uh, whatever, he's going to do whatever he can uh, to keep me from stealing the base. And, and, yeah. and I, I can't do that to Bobby. He's, he's been to... In 1965, the Dodgers had a switch hitting infield. Wes Parker at first base, Jim Lefevre at second base. You were the shortstop. Jim Gilliam was at third base. You beat the Twins in the World Series that year. Do you think the fact that the Dodgers had so many switch hitters helped them? Oh, I know it did. Oh, yes. Uh, Sam Mealy was the manager uh, of the Twins at the time. Amon Killebrew was over there. Uh, I think uh, Bob Allison was too. Um, Tony they, Oliva. Tony Oliva. Yeah. Yes, they they had quite a quite a quite a lineup. Um, but I think the left-handed hitters, the switch hitters rather, uh, were just too much for them. Yeah. All right, I want to talk about some of the other thrills in your life. One day in a game against the Mets, you hit two home runs, one left-handed and one right-handed. Now, what made that day unusual, the way you did it? Well, one from one side of the plate and one from the, on the other side of the plate is, is very unusual to start with. Um, I don't know how I did that. You don't did it because do it. The, fir the first home run was inside the park and the second one cleared the fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. Yeah, Bobby Bregan was not laughing. <laughs> um, okay. Um, um, yeah, that, that, that was a great day for me. I don't know how I did it, Ross. I don't know. Yeah. You had another game against the Mets when you were a base runner at first base and your former Dodger teammate, Roger Craig was on the mound for New York. He threw to first 12 straight times. <laughs> and on the next pitch to the plate, you stole second base. Of course, Roger lost 24 games that year. And the next year he dropped 22, <laughs> but that's a pretty good uh, run of throwing the ball to first base, wasn't it? Yeah, Roz, you know, you really, you, you have done your homework, uh, if I may start that, this answer. Um, that, that was not the only time that the pitcher threw over there that many times. Uh, I, I've had the pitcher throw over so many times that I wanted to say, time out and go to the mound and say, will you just go home and give me a break? Um, but um, I remember that day, too. I'll always remember. Yeah. When you and the Dodgers played in San Francisco in 1962, the year you were the most valuable player in the National League, the Giants manager, Alvin Dark, 
had his grounds crew soak the dirt on the right side of the infield until it was muddy in an effort to prevent you from stealing second. What did you do? What did that do for what, Ross? When, when it was muddy it's in San Francisco and Al Dark had soaked the field. Did Were I steal? steal? Were you able to steal? I'm sure I was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had prepared myself to steal a base even if it was muddy or if it was dry. Uh, in fact, we nicknamed Alvin Dark the Swamp. <laughs> the Swamp um, Fox, right? <laughs> yeah, the Swamp Fox. Yeah. Uh, and that did not help him any. Uh, keep me, that did not keep me from stealing the base, I should say. Yeah. Maury, I don't know if you remember this, but you and I announced a game one night at Dodger Stadium. I was at Channel 4, and we were televising high school sports. And you agreed to be my analyst on the Los Angeles City Baseball Finals. I think it was a Thursday night, and we were not going to play the tape until Saturday. So we had a great game to call. I think it was like eight to seven, <laughs> only in the fifth inning. And for some reason, at that time, I looked over at the television camera on the first base side, and much to my astonishment, there was no cameraman <laughs> behind the camera. And about that time, the TV director came into our booth and he told us, due to technical problems, none of this game has been taped. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And now you can go home. Maury, I hope you got your check. <laughs> <laughs> no, no check was involved. This was high school. Uh -huh. uh, a high school uh, activity, um, but uh, there's a lot of enjoyment, and yeah. just just sitting there with you, Ross, was well, thank the you. enjoyment. And you also did uh, uh, baseball analyst work for NBC. Yes, I did. Uh, that that wasn't even close to being as enjoyable as it was working the NBC game, or that 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 high school game yeah. with you. Tell us so, the story. Tell us the story about the, the, the week that you spent with sportscaster Kurt Gowdy. I think you were in a duck blind or somewhere. Uh, and, and tell us that that story. You started talking to him. Yeah. Uh, we were um, uh, we were somewhere in the state of Washington. And and I was I was uh, I was analyst for NBC Sports, I should say for NBC baseball games. Uh, and uh, so, so you asked him though. You, I don't think you'd been out of the game long. You told Kurt. You said, you know, I'm really thinking about being a broadcaster. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and you kept asking him. You kept asking him questions, and he kept trying to uh, answer them. And finally, he said, "You know, you got one problem, Maury." He said, "What's that, Kurt?" He said, "Lack of confidence." <laughs> I, 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 uh, um, that never happened with you, though, because because you always took care of me, Ross, that's and I really right. appreciate it. That's right. I'm looking Maury. for some help right now. <laughs> Maury, anything you want to say to the fans? It's been so wonderful to have you. Well, yeah, I want to, to the fans, I just want to say it's nice being on, on TV with you and answering these questions. I, I, I hope, I, hope uh, I answered some questions that fans might have had. Very too. well. Um, thank you, Ross. Uh, Ross Porter. Are you, are you still playing the banjo? Still playing the banjo and playing it well. Are I'm you? not as good as Eddie Peabody, but I'm still good. That's great. Maury, take care of yourself, my friend. Thanks to you and Carlo for making this possible. And uh, God bless you. Thank you, Ross. You mentioned Carla's name. <laughs> she smiled <laughs> and grinning from ear to ear. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Maury. Thank you, Ross. Thank you very much. It's been fun for me.